Hello there, my very good friends. On today's wrestling news, a major reunion is coming to WWE. AEW's latest wrestler signing kicks serious ass. Betting odds for Money in the Bank have been revealed. And we've got a major update on the AEW Ross split and the future of the company's titles. I'm Andy Murray. I'm Michael Hamflit. And this is the news. Adam Wilborn's on holiday. Shout outs to that guy sitting in the sun doing no things while we read the news, including yeah. our first story, major reunion coming to WWE. Who is it? It's degenerate. No, it's not. Oh. It, it's DIY. <laughs> it's DIY. It, it begins with a D. Yeah. It's, a, it's okay. Um, this is a report from WWE Insider at Boozer Wrestling slash Better Wrestling Experience, who has been on the money with a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. So as long as they continue being on the money, we will talk about them and cover their stuff. Um, so this is something that's been covered. I mean, it's, it's done the round several times. Talk of bringing Tommaso Ciampa back as Johnny Gargano's tag team partner, yep. a member of the way and all of that stuff. In fact, Johnny's referenced it kind of on TV. Oh, it'll be better when he gets here or yeah. whatever the lines, uh, whatever those lines have been. But yeah, there's, there's, there's still plans in place as of yesterday to put them back together when Champa is able to return, which you might imagine would be soon given the teases and stuff. That being said, the man was very seriously hurt. Um, we've all seen, yeah. I'm sure, the photos of him like getting stem cell treatment and, mm -hmm. and other things. Like he's, he's been through the wars. Uh, old Tommaso Ketchup. What? <laughs> Tommaso Champa. Or, so, or Tommy Sauce himself. <laughs> Tommy Sauce, there he is, new nickname. Uh, but yeah, I mean, DIY, obviously. Not a huge surprise that the Triple H would want to reunite his most successful tag team ever. No, it's like yet another Triple H old reliable from NXT that he's transporting onto the main roster in a way that he wouldn't have been allowed to do when Vince McMahon was still, not that he's not in the chair, but yeah. in the chair instead of Triple H. DIY, um, for all it got a bit melodramatic and silly uh, in the pandemic especially, as a tag team, kind of never missed. Yeah. Like they were an extremely reliable takeover act. Their own brand of drama isn't necessarily for everybody, but they had more great matches than bad ones. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I think Triple H is starting to get a bit of credit for is the tag division he's built in the mm -hmm. last year or so. Um, Vince McMahon infamously didn't care about tag team wrestling and Triple H has proven its worth. We've had a tag team match, uh, main event at WrestleMania. Main event had, Raw this week. Indeed like, it did. Yeah. It featured heavily in obviously the latest big bloodline development, which has been the company's biggest story. Uh, I think DIY would be a good fit and it'd be the first thing with purpose Gargano has done yeah, since re-signing. He, he started off as like a wacky prank guy, which was Oof. really not, not, Making the best use of that gentleman's abilities, no. I think is the diplomatic way of putting it. And uh, yeah, he's really not had a clear sense of direction since coming back, uh, which is kind of a shame. Uh, but yeah, like, I mean, for a long period, particularly when they were wrestling FTR, the tag team title match was one of the things you looked forward to most on takeovers and yeah. stuff. So yeah, makes a lot of sense. Hope Champa's doing okay. Hope, hmm. his, hope his ailments are clearing up nicely. Uh, he's been through a lot injury-wise over the years, of course, like with his neck and, and other bits and pieces. So yeah. yeah, hope he's doing okay. That's the main thing. There's a Zane Owens quality to those two, isn't there, as well? Because yeah. as great as they can be as a tag team, you're just waiting for the next split and feud to yeah. like, hey, double bubble. Speaking of which, let us know down below who you want to see DIY face on the main. Who do you want them to feud with? Yeah. What matches do you want to see happen? Let us know down below. We'd, we'd love to hear that. Speaking of things we want to see, EJ Nduka is this one of them. This guy. Look at this guy, look at this guy. The man formerly known as Ezra Judged uh, is a recent signing of uh, Tony Khan and AEW. We believe he's gonna kick some serious ass. Uh, Fight Select came through the report that he was uh, actually signed early in uh, 2023, um, shortly after wrestling Konosuke Takeshita mm. uh, on an episode of Dark in late January. Um, we haven't seen him wrestling since, but he was kicking around over WrestleMania weekend. And the report said that he was, quote, uh, under some sort of AEW deal for quite a while. Um, WWE, of course, wanted him back. Why would you not look mm -hmm. at the guy? Why would you let him go? Well, indeed. Um, and AEW's interest was reportedly quite immediate, as again, it would yeah. be. Look at the guy. I know I keep saying it, but look at this guy. Um, it's potentially quite exciting, I think, this one, because AEW has developed a reputation. Tony Khan has developed somewhat of a reputation for 
overstuffing his roster mm -hmm. with guys that maybe obviously have been released in these mass releases over the years from WWE. But with Collision on the way, with two more hours, it feels like, and we're going to get to this later on, there's going to be more opportunities for more guys. Yeah. And people with such a unique talent, or like at very least, like an incredible visual appeal, mm -hmm. might have more opportunity to stand out than they would have done, say, one or two years ago. Yeah, absolutely. He, uh, EJ and Duca was, I remember when he was released by WWE, I think it was 2021. It was one of those rounds of releases during mm -hmm. the weird era of yeah. pro wrestling. And now the backstage reaction, if I recall, was like, what, why are we letting this guy go? He's <laughs> like got mountains of potential. Yeah. Uh, so it was like a real surprising one backstage, behind the scenes. Um, and obviously, the, look. I mean, look at the guy. He's he's chiselled. He's an Adonis. Um, he's also like six foot eight. So like physically, like aesthetically, has all the tools as well. But it's it goes beyond that as well. Like his potential is really held in high regard. He's been in MLW for the past couple of years until becoming a free agent this year. And if you watch him there, like it's clear, you know, he's still putting the pieces together as a pro wrestler, mm -hmm. but he has an immediate like arresting star power about him. And that's like something you can't teach in pro wrestling, which is very important. So uh, to me, like AEW signing someone is hardly a story these days, but when it's a prospect of this caliber, when it's someone that they can like help sculpt yeah. and like build, and developing everything else. To me, that's really exciting and uh, almost more exciting than bringing in someone who I've watched 200 matches off in a lot of ways because you don't know how it's going to turn out. You don't know how... You follow them on their journey yeah. pretty much from day one. And I think EJ on his cage match page is only has like 30 matches. Mm -hmm. So he's a really young, like in terms of wrestling. Um, he's 34 years old, but like, you know, he's not an established wrestler or whatever. Uh, I'm looking forward to following his journey. It can't work out 10 times out of 10. It's never going to have a 100% hit rate, but that philosophy, especially with... AEW being a mainstream offering is kind of what the challenger yeah. brand should do. I think you yeah. want a, like Wilborn jokes typically about like Kano Takeshita being a rookie because he's just discovered him because he's only made it to the mainstream. He's taking the piss, yeah. He is taking the piss, but that is how it feels if you don't watch wrestling yeah. outside of the, you know, TV bubble. And a guy coming in with almost no television, mainstream television exposure mm -hmm. is almost a better, a more attractive proposition for an AEW than a WWE, I think. Yeah, that's the thing, because if they, even when they bring in like a Kazuchika Okada, you still get numpties going, who is this guy? Yeah, where's the story? <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> why, do, yeah. Where? <laughs> why doesn't this really cool guy have a 20-page long Wikipedia page that you've regurgitated on my TV show? Brian Okada are only fighting over who's the best wrestler. Where's, yeah. the, where's the stories in the angle? Yeah, why? Make, why? It, make it make sense. Uh, come on, Brian, trash his car or something. <laughs> Steal his girlfriend or something come oh, on do you really want to trash his car i would subscribe. that would be really good i it? would subscribe to that storyline and we <laughs> appreciate you for subscribing to the channel an orange bucket of just stop yeah. oil paint all over a car's car or something like that from brighton this, this is the kind of fantasy booking you get when you click that subscribe button and you ring the bell for notifications subscribe for real stories this is it <laughs> this is what you get I don't know if we've sold it or not, but on to the betting favorites for Money in the Bank. Um, we shouldn't look too much into these because, you know, they're not necessarily based in a whole lot of like backstage in the know stuff. However, I do think they are interesting, which is why I've put it in the video. Uh, Bet Online released their odds and there's no odds yet for the women's bout, presumably because only five of the six participants have been confirmed. It's mm -hmm. not complete yet. There's a slot still to fill. Uh, but on the men's side, the favorite is LA Knight. Yes. Yeah. Y yes. Uh, <laughs> he's got odds of minus 200. I never understand how oh, these things work. Uh, Damien Priest is next at plus 125. After that, in joint place, third, fourth, fifth, whatever, Nakamura, Buchin, Escobar, plus 1,000. So they're quite distant. And then Ricochet, poor Ricochet's last at plus 1,400. So there you go. LA Knight is your betting odd, uh, betting favorite. I keep calling him Ellie. <laughs> I do this every single time. <laughs> Ellie Knight. Eleanor Knight. <laughs> um, but you, like, I mean, he would be, of the people who've been announced, which is the complete lineup, like I think all of these people kick ass, don't get me wrong. He'd be my pick for yeah. sure. Because he's the most over and he's the most fun at the moment. It's, we've kind of discussed him quite a lot lately because he does feel like this guy that's trapped in a bit of a creative tug of war yeah. between Vince McMahon and Triple H, doesn't he? Um, somebody that Triple H clearly ranks very highly. He kind of used him a lot in NXT before he ended up making it onto the main roster where he was deep pushed under Vince McMahon as the original member of Maximum Male Models and all that sort of thing. So his uh, trajectory has not been the smoothest in WWE, but I think when he's over in the UK, um, it feels like in arenas now, he's becoming, remember when it was Kennedy? 
when like you would get to an arena and before there was any action, there would just be people shouting up for the call and response stuff. You get the Ric Flair wounds, you get yeah. all that sort of what's whatever. And Kennedy was a guy that generated those chants. Mm -hmm. I think we are in the current, and Adam Cole baby, another one. Yeah. We're currently in the era of LA Knight. Yeah. yeah. I think he's one of them in arena guys that like is over before the lights have even gone down. Mm -hmm. So when he actually walks out of the ring, people have been like Jones in a chant for him all night. They just want to say the thing. Yeah. They want to say the thing. He does a lot of that sort of stuff. Yeah. Like he gets a bit of grief for being Stone Cold Rock Austin some of the time. But if you're gonna borrow and copy, borrow and copy from the very, very best. Everyone man. borrows and copies. Yeah, tweak like, it yeah. and make it your own. I th like, dare I say it, for a WWE guy in a pushed position, he's kind of developing cult status. Yeah, definitely, feels like. definitely. He's one of the most over people in the company. Hope he wins, baby, hope yeah. he wins. And I hope uh, Zoe Stark wins the, the other match. I'm glad they're cool. Yeah, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Like, that's another cool thing about winning the bank this year. You have the potential of it not being ex champions wanting another go. Yeah. You could potentially rocket strap to brand new people, which would be Why nice, not? nice to see. Um, and speaking of things that are nice to see, All right. depending on your view on roster splits, I guess. Tony Khan has spoken in detail about the. Uh, Impending roster split of Collision and Dynamite, and indeed the future of the titles. There's not been a lot of uh, confirmed information about how exactly Collision will work, other mm -hmm. than it's on Saturday night, other than CM Punk's going to be on it. It's a TV show. It's a TV I show. I can it's... confirm that. That's it. We've, like, we're happy. Breaking news. We're happy to put our names on that. <laughs> um, but Tony Khan, at very least, was uh, happy to put his name on a few more details for now. Uh, it's committal and then not. I'll explain through his words rather than my own. He was speaking on Barstool Wrestling. Um, they have a pretty good podcast. I don't know Will Bond's bit, but like it's, it's not as good as ours. Ah, uh, shout out to Robbie. I don't he, know what he does. He, yeah, they're, they're, they're he's good, a nice guy. They're good guys, good though. And look, they got Tony Khan, so they know what they're doing. Um, uh, yeah, it's, uh, we've got us. <laughs> This is going to shock you, but it's quite a long quote from Tony, yeah. so you'll have to bear with me here. All right. uh, he please, says, uh, please don't do the voice. I, I, I don't know what you mean. I, I, I will speak only as myself. He says, uh, I'm going to feature certain talent on certain shows, but I haven't drawn any hard lines or locked us in any kind of split roster. I think people are going to be featured on certain shows, but I also think that gives us great opportunity to showcase certain wrestlers on both Dynamite and Collision at certain times and certain stories that can cross the shows. I think the champions of AEW will be the champions on every show and frankly, every promotion in the world. We're not <laughs> shy about AEW wrestlers going out and taking top stars, top competition from other companies. Clear? No? Then I'll continue. The roster we have is so strong. I believe we have so many great wrestlers. It's impossible to showcase them all in three hours of television. Now it's much better with five hours of television. Across five hours of television, we can utilize the roster much more frequently and utilize our great wrestlers much more than they've ever been used before. So I'm very excited. Look, I'm just glad we got this mess cleared up. I'm glad we finally know where we're at with this collision dynamite thing. All joking aside, right? This is Wednesday morning. Dynamite tonight could confirm a series of matches that could clue us in more on what the rosters are going to look like. Uh, the main event of the first collision, of course, that six man between <laughs> Punk and FTR versus Jay White, Juice Robinson, and Joe gives us the indication that those six at least will be prominently featured on collision going but, uh, forward. It depends on the storyline. They may need to cross over to Dynamite, it but did. other wrestlers may be look, stuck. We've on. got a lot of great wrestlers here in AEW, and we're looking forward to using them not just for three hours, but for five hours. Champions can wrestle anywhere in the world. I'm looking forward to MJF hitting money in the bank next Did week. you know that MJF is the WWE? <laughs> now you do. It's look, I we're, we're taking the mick a little bit, but I think there is genuinely uh, a case here where the less they say about a roster split right now, the better. Um, there are television networks involved here. Like for all we know, they've had to sell um, TNT in two more hours, not just on CM Punk, but on the entire slate of AEW wrestlers. Yeah. We've all talked about Punk and the Elite as these dividing forces between Dynamite and Collision. Like, what if it doesn't go any deeper than that? What if Tony Khan believes what he says and expects every wrestler to be on every plane as and when he needs them? What if Excalibur today gets told, hey buddy, you're calling two more hours on a Saturday night, see you there. <laughs> like, we, we just don't know. Yeah. I'd like to know, but I think at the moment it probably behooves him uh, not say it until he's actually definitely sure. I also think he's scared of hard roster splits because WWE have bodged them so many times. I think he's scared of hard men. That's why he's running away. <laughs> That's why he's running away from Larry the dog. Anyway, let's uh, move over to our Twitter questions for the day. Just glad we cleared that up. Yeah, hard. I mean, Larry the dog. I guess he's technically a man. He's a male dog. How old is he? I don't know who the hell. We are. Are we happy to confirm Larry the dog is a free agent? Yeah, exclusive. Anyway, uh, questions from the YouTube community today. Uh, this is where the questions are going to come from for the rest of the week. So if you want to be featured on tomorrow or Friday's video, look out for the thread, like late afternoon US East Coast, evening UK time. Check the YouTube community page. It's a good place. Uh, Rob Mueller 84 has been on. I would like to know, had Ray joined AEW at the start, Ray Mysterio, booyaka booyaka, uh, whose place in the four pillars do you think ex-condom would have taken? <laughs> and which title would he currently be holding? Uh, 
I'll let you start. <laughs> uh, all of them, obviously. <laughs> Double, He'd be every pillar. The double or nothing main event would have just been uh, Dominic Mysterio just standing in the ring for 20 minutes. Yeah. No spots. Just just nothing but legitimate, completely real heat. Andy <laughs> Murray. I I pull that way, don't <laughs> 20 minutes of nothing but crowd heat. Uh, uh, realistically, probably Jungle Boy. Like, let's be realistic about this. You yeah. could do the son of a wrestler babyface run that Jungle Boy's had, followed by the devastating heel turn that Jungle Boy has seemed to do. Jungle, Jungle Boy the, can wrestle for They're the same, it's right? The... Luke Perry and Dominic <laughs> Jack Perry, Jack Perry and Dominic Mysterio are the same. <laughs> okay. Dom better. I don't know. I, I don't, none of them, obviously. I, I don't. I love you're doing a Wilbur bit. I love it. Uh, I, I have so much fun with the Dominic Mysterio stuff, but I don't think it would have worked in AEW. I think that the reason the Dominic Mysterio stuff resonates in WWE is because it is extremely sports entertainment. -y. Yeah. I think it is perfect for that environment. I don't. I don't think he would have taken any pillar spots. I don't think he would even have gotten over. Mm. Um, because it just like a match like the one that him and Ray had at Mania is it was amazing, but it was complete nonsense. Yeah, like it is the kind of thing that AEW generally doesn't do a lot of, and when they do do it, it doesn't always get over. So I think Dom is in the perfect place, and I think that means Ray is in the perfect place as well because I think anchoring his future to a company with Ray, I think it was important where it was somewhere he could bring his son through. Yeah. So I think that everything is well in the land of WWE and the, the Mysterios and the Doms and the Subs and what, who's <laughs> what in that relationship, I don't know. Also, something else that would prevent Dominic Mysterio from getting over at AEW a little bit is that Tony Khan doesn't pipe crowd heat into his arenas. So that would have been a good... Well, he, they used to, to be fair, for, actually, that was for a, a while. Yeah, that was Ramp, a Rampage had a weird era, but... Um, <laughs> Look, look, I love- <laughs> Rampage volume is goaded. Yeah, like, I like, I, don't get me wrong, I really enjoy the Dominic Mysterio stuff, but someone's pushing a button on that heat, and if you don't believe me, a vet, I won't say this person's name, because I don't know if they want it out there, but a very high level WWE wrestler has admitted it, and, and, yeah. and has actually argued that it's a good thing, because it's a TV show, so mm. you can have it out down below and let me know what you think of that. Uh, Moving on. Oh, Dom Callis. <laughs> Dom Callis. Get the hell out of here. Uh, right. Rob Robot Mafia. That's a scary prospect. Yeah. Oh, uh, triple Zero has been on. Do you think that CM Punk's return will be a success? Real simple. Uh, yes, broadly. I don't know. The ticket sales aren't looking good. Um, but I think AW as a television show will be better with him on it. Uh, you often don't get... The true benefit of CM Punk when he stopped drawing, which was starting to happen in AEW, and maybe he'll just come back as a non-ticket selling guy. But once he's deep in the weeds of the storyline, I don't this few like him. Yeah. In any era, yeah. like CM Punk stories hold up years and years and years afterwards um, because they're just operating on another level to what so few do. But ironically, stuff people say about the elite. They're so much more similar than like they never gets talked about. But punk stuff always holds up magnificently, and I think he's gonna start doing stuff again that we've missed. I agree. I am dubious of him having a like a big business impact. Yeah. I think the ticket sales so far speak a lot, but I will enjoy the content until the wheels inevitably come off the wagon. Because th this, this is what happens. It's, it's weird, isn't it? Like It's uh, how it works. I think, anecdotally, I think people could do, and subjectively, I think people could do with having their faith in AEW's uh, creative restored a little bit. Sure. And some of the quality of Punk's work will absolutely do that. But then if anyone's gonna smash that to pieces, it's CM Punk yeah. himself. I so it's a, all, that sort of goes both ways, doesn't it? I did a poll on the YouTube community yesterday. Uh, are you still excited for CM Punk? Yeah. And it was 48% no, 52% yes. Or the other way around. So it was basically split almost right down the middle. Uh, divisive guy. I'm still looking forward to Saturday. Speaking of Saturday, tune in. We're live streaming for Collision's debut episode. Us two. I don't know if that's a draw or, or, <laughs> or the opposite when I'm when I'm involved. But we'll actually be on like an hour and a half earlier yeah. because with you guys, we're going to watch Samoa Joe versus CM Punk 1. Yes. Ring of Honor match. It's on YouTube. You can watch it for free along with us. It's going to be a great time. Join us. We'll get links and stuff out there in the next few days. Yeah. So tell you where to go. Coming soon. Kick ass. And we'll do this one real quickly. Auzi7411 has been on. What are your thoughts on the new women's title just being a smaller white strapped versions of the men's titles instead of having an homage uh, to the Attitude Era Women's title. For me, personally, I have no nostalgia for the Attitude Era Women's Championship. Maybe some people do, fair play. Uh, for me, I think that the new designs are fine. Uh, 
I don't know, the men's ones are pretty ugly, and these ones are kind of <laughs> like versions of that. But that being said, I would rather have parity where they look kind of similar. Yeah, I agree with that. I think the um, remember when they first introduced the WWE Women's title? It was Lita at WrestleMania 32, and the whole point was they're just superstars. Yeah. Then it's not like there's no division anymore. There's no butterfly belt, all that kind of thing. The one thing I will say, and I don't think WWE's coming for much flack for this, is that Triple H rolled out the massive red carpets for Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns and just chucked Adam Pearce out there to do these mm -hmm. in flimsy little segments. So whilst there was parity in the belts, there wasn't really in the unveiling. And WWE are kind of getting away with one there, and I don't particularly mm -hmm. like that. Like, so it's like they've done something that's quite good, but yeah. they also they went all in with the men's. Yeah, like yeah, that. That's like a good it's point. kind of like it's subtraction by addition or whatever that thing is, where like the division isn't exactly being elevated by the new belts if you're not actually sending out the real boss Triple H when you send out this cartoon authority figure to do it instead. Yeah. So I think they could have done with a slightly more dramatic unveiling because Roman Reigns got half an hour on television and Seth Rollins got the big story as the, the workhorse guy and all that, but the belts themselves, I think they look pretty cool. I think they look cool too, and you know what else is quite cool? This video right here that I think you're really going to enjoy. See you later, bye.